Well, I can imagine meeting someone like Chuck in person and interacting with him, but it would have been because he escaped a place that has like foam in a, in a room and he gets his food <laughs> right, to right, him right. under a door, but not a person who's an attorney and is married. So let me ask Well, you- Pat, they're trending on Google right now. He's getting a lot of business. You're right. <laughs> Uh, joining us on the horn from parts unknown, Houston, uh, right? Calling Houston, us right. from from parts Houston, uh, uh, the two yeah. heroes of the last episode of Below Deck Sailing Out. I, I guess the last two, um, the Charter from Hell, it's Rhett and Janelle. Thank you guys for joining us. Sure, no problem. Mm-hmm. Rhett's, uh, you know. As far as the uh, the interwebs and like uh, you know the the love of, the, of that has been sh- like showering, Porn out, pouring. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's just right under Zelensky, right? As far right, as right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Almost, almost, <laughs> almost. But um, you know, we we want to talk about the entire charter. We spoke to uh, Chuck and Erica Rose. Um, as you can imagine, it wasn't that pleasant uh, a conversation, and he has a philosophical misunderstanding of uh, tip, be it monetarily or uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, Admission- etymologically. Yeah, there we go. So uh, we have a tradition on this show. Pat usually asks the first question, so I'm going to kick it to him right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. We did not step on it. <laughs> Good job, Dylan. We're growing. Uh, first off, thanks for uh, joining us, guys. All right. So you had a pretty tumultuous week, I guess, with people on social media and just all this craziness that what took place on your charter. You guys obviously filmed this, what, eight months ago, right? June, July. June, July. July. Yeah. Was Erica Rose... Whoa, whoa, how'd you get on this? How'd you get on the show? Oh, That's I'll, your first No, question. no, I'm going to get there. I'm going to okay. get there. I want to ask you, first off, knowing that there... I Can would you hope- stop for a second? <laughs> yeah. I mean... What in God's name is going on? Well, I know how they got on the show. Erica Rose invited them. We We're trying to emphasize a bit we do, But though. we oh. always know how people get on the show, oh. yet you ask every time. <laughs> Theirs is more interesting than others because I think Erica was scrambling to find so friends. So why not ask the question you always ask? All right, Dylan. Hey, guys, how'd you get on the show? Uh, we took a plane and got on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking terrible answer, right? <laughs> no. Uh, go ahead. Um, I was doing her hair at the time when the, uh, um, I guess when the email came in and, and, uh, people were not, uh, being vaccinated. And so, uh, some people were falling off and not being able to go in the charters. And so she asked me, have you ever wanted to go on a reality TV show? And I said, no. And <laughs> she said, well, um, have you ever wanted to go to Spain? And I was like, Hmm. And then she told me what the price was. And I was like, Hmm, that sounds kind of cool. Good. Um, and, uh, so I went home, I said, well, I'll go home and talk to my husband about it. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we can. Sorry for the distraction. It's just, there's so many moving parts when you're trying to do a zoom show, you guys wouldn't even know the half of it, but we've got it all ironed out and can't thank you enough for joining us. <laughs> no problem. All right. So here, I want to go back to my initial question, which is very interesting, which is <laughs> did Erica Rose and Chuck, well, definitely Chuck would have done this. Did Erica Rose knowing, knowing what was filmed eight months ago, try and reach out to you? Was there any conversation in between then and the airing of the show? She uh, tried to reach out to me specifically via um, people that we knew that I did their hair or whatever. Tell Janelle I said hello. Da, 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 da. She had texted a couple of people and then she sent her husband into my salon on February the 3rd um, to apologize to me um, for his behavior. Uh, and he cornered one of my clients um, who had no clue. Um, we're in a, an affluent neighborhood in Houston. Um, and so she had no clue about the show at all. And he um, was talking to her about the show. One of my stylists had to make him leave. Whoa. And then she showed up a couple of days later and brought a gift um, of which I mailed back to her um, because I just, I can't. Power move. That. Love the move. Yeah. Did you open it or did you send it back unopened? Because if it was really nice, you might want to, you know, pawn just it. keep it or pawn so it. One of my stylists opened it um, because I 
I mean, it was a traumatic experience for me personally. I have anxiety. And so being stuck on a boat with somebody who was like this yeah. really kind of um, did a lot of stuff and to me emotionally. Right. And so for me, I, I couldn't open it. And so one of my staff opened it and she has made it such a big deal. And so is a mother that she's Jewish, but she gave me a cross uh-huh. and it had the Lord's prayer on it. And then beautiful um, gift. Yeah. Well, Jewish people were responsible for the cross. So <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And then she, she also gave me um, a letter and it just basically said how much she respected me and all this other stuff. I kept the little note that was on the notepad, but I sent the notepad and the cross back. She um, at first started to blame it all on Chuck. And when I told her that it was all three of them and not only did they offend me, they embarrassed me and then they hurt my feelings on top of it. And then I couldn't talk to it on a Saturday when I had so many clients at my salon. Um, I just kind of left it at that. Right. Now, I would imagine it would be a pretty anxiety uh, ridden ridden stricken riddled uh, yeah, uh, just a ton of anxiety aboard that uh that boat because we often joke that it's like a clown car we're not sure how there are so many rooms on that boat but it's a very very small space well, well i can imagine meeting someone like chuck in person and interacting with him but it would have been because he escaped a place that has like foam in a, in a room and he gets his food <laughs> right, to right, him, right. under a door but not a person who's an attorney and is married so let me ask well, you. Pat, they're trending on Google right now. He's getting a lot of business. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Um, okay. So let me ask you this. No, we, before you ask that, what we, are you doing? we have to talk about this apology. I mean, I want to, I, 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 this, the notion of Chuck walking into a salon and then apologizing, I mean, it must have been a well, fucking disaster. Well, and he got disaster. tossed, so he must have been crazy. Uh, so yeah, what happened? He was in there for, what, 15 minutes before somebody said, please leave. You're bothering everybody. Uh, we got it on camera. There's cameras everywhere, but uh, yeah, no, he, he walked in and he walked up to the client and he cornered her and he started talking to her about the show and saying he needed to apologize. And he was extremely um, hyper. And um, I had several clients there and one of my stylists who's a male walked up and I, he said, who is that over there? And I said, that's Chuck Rose. And he says, oh, hell no. And mm. so he walked over and told him that he needed to leave. And he said, well, I need to I need to talk to Janelle. And he said, no, you're not talking to Janelle. You need to leave. Beautiful. And it was okay. his erratic behavior that was freaking out the staff, I assume, was why they asked him to leave. No, they know what they, that he did. Mm. Like, okay. They, okay. Yeah. All right. They, they all know what happened, like, when I got back. And you were done. It sounds like you were done. You and Rhett were done. You were done probably on the second night when dinner was happening. You're like, I, I couldn't get further away from these people. Am I, am I over? To be honest with you, man, I met her once at the salon. It was the day before we were leaving. I'd never met the husband. And for the first time when we met them, actually, we took a different flight than them. So I travel a lot with work. And they couldn't guarantee that Janelle could make it home at a certain time. So I went ahead and went to United and booked all of her stuff. And that's when Erica got mad and wanted to change all their flights because they found out we were in first class and they weren't. Uh, And it was strictly just because I travel a lot. And that was the only real purpose we got upgraded. But uh, we got to the airport. They had been there since noon and their flight was delayed for six hours. So when we showed up for our flight, they were all belligerently drunk an intercontinental airport just coming out of the uh, Amex lounge right. and bragging everybody how they were drinking for free in the Amex lounge. And it was mostly, right. you know, Chuck and his <laughs> wife and the mother didn't really say much, but that was the first time that I actually encountered Chuck and met Chuck. And then I met the other gentleman, Greg, who was super nice and Susan and the other, the other young lady that was on the plane, uh, on the plane with them. How well, no, Cindy. Is that how you say to you? well, I didn't really talk to Cindy, but, that was the first time I encountered them. And then when we got to Menorca, we got there several hours before them. And we had already kind of come across all the messages and heard what had happened. And we were in our room and they put him in a room right next to us. And he was screaming and yelling in the hallway. And so I opened the door and it was them. <laughs> and they wanted to immediately tell us their whole rendition of the airplane, which <laughs> I basically told Janelle that it's none of our fucking business. And we went back in the room and shut it. And uh, we were supposed to quarantine and honestly, we jumped the fence and went and ate dinner on the island because we didn't want to stay in the room next to him. So we left and went and had dinner. What a then, great uh, start. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much how the boat, how the, how the trip started. Wow. You know, we saw, we got to see what Erica, who Erica is when Chuck's not around. 
you know, you, you obviously are probably aware that she was on the show last year or last season. She's Dees. <laughs> What's that mean? She's not that bad, but she's, she's not. She wasn't like. Right. But she's not what we saw this time. Her and Chuck together in a uh, Captain Planet kind of way, put their rings together and transform into something truly horrific. <sighs> um, let me ask you this. As far as what viewers saw of your experience, was it worse was it portrayed exactly exactly what we saw, or was it not as bad? And there was some editing there. How would you? There was no. There was no acting. The the whole thing. Of, I'm so sorry. We have 130 pound. Oh, that's okay. He sounds big. Hey. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's like a big pit bull. He's um, barking at the door. There was no acting. Uh, there was not multiple takes. There was nothing. Of course other not. Than right. Them. Right. Right. And uh, it. No, it was as bad, if not worse. Okay. Who did I mean, you hear that Chuck likes to go to hotels and, and complain to get his meals yeah. free from? Yeah. Chuck? So, uh, uh, his wife. They, they told me that directly. They, <laughs> they, they shared a lot of stuff with me that was extremely inappropriate. You see and I tried my best. I mean, there's been still photos of me out there on my laptop, and that's because every I don't drink, so I had to work while we were on the boat. So every morning I was up before 6 a.m. while everybody was asleep and the captain set me up in the only spot that had Wi-Fi on the boat. So I would sit there and work for hours and they would bring me coffee and they were nice enough to make me like handmade PB and J's for breakfast at six in the morning so I could work and everybody else was asleep. Well, I don't and know then, if uh, handmade should ever be <laughs> put in front of peanut good, butter. Though, I no, I, I would imagine it's a good PB and J, but handmade is a little. Yeah, well, I mean, they had their hands on it. No, that that's a good, I, I, <laughs> what I, I illustrates the difference between this wonderful couple and those two <laughs> right. demons, though, better than the right. appreciation for a yeah. nice handmade? So let's talk PB about the food. How uh, was the food? Yeah, was it gross? No, no, the food was amazing, man. I mean, Marco was great. We actually had many conversations with Marco about he wanted to start a new restaurant. We talked to him about doing a restaurant with him in L.A. He wanted to start a new one. And we were actually out in L.A. in October to help my sister who was having surgery. And we were unable to meet up with him, but we had all intentions and talked to him about meeting up and trying to get into a restaurant with him because he was going to start another location. But the gentleman was amazing. Amazing. Yeah, if you could open amazing. that anywhere but L.A., that would be great. Just trying to save you a headache. Um, yeah, he's got two of them there now. So does that's he where really? Wow. Oh, yeah. that's right. Oh, the truck's probably brick and mortar at this point. Yeah. Good for him. He's such yeah, a good guy. It is. And, you know, he's an amazing chef. He really is. He made him two steaks. I don't eat red meat, but he made me a uh, fish and just a whole bunch of stuff that, I mean, I, we couldn't, I, I ended up going down to the galley after I had heard of the, the um, display that was being done, the acting uh, unquote, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Susan and I went down there, and I apologized profusely to him, telling him I'm sorry I was that he was having to deal with that, and that not everybody felt like that, and we're so appreciative of him, and thank you so much for doing it and making re multiple steaks, and just we didn't want him to feel the way he had to have been feeling because he is impeccable and he's amazing and the way he he um does his food is just delicious yeah there's, to, to there's, transition from a hitman into such a talented chef well there, Sorry, there's some ahead. people man that no, i was gonna say there's some people that are a master at their craft and you can look at their resume and it speaks for themselves right. and this this guy was the personal chef for the clintons for like six years he was right. a chef for the kardashians he cooked for shakira for like three years i mean when you look at his resume of whose house he cooks in on a daily basis and how much they love him. Right. I mean, granted, they've got big names, but people pay him. So obviously he's pretty good. Yeah. He's we the don't real have deal. A big name, but we don't have a big name, but we'll say he was delicious. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, if this is inappropriate because I, I, you guys are Southern, Southern people. I assume you don't like to talk badly about others. What in your, from what you've known Erica Rose personally, and then there's Chuck. What is going on here? Like, how do they exist in a world where you have Chuck yelling day and night at people, strangers, people working for him, and then her essentially enabling, but not, and also not stepping in and trying to calm it down? I just, I can't understand these two people. Do you have any insight on what the F is going on? I mean, personally, from knowing their background history, uh, I think they feed off each other. 
You know, I think it's uh, an like, hour experience. It, yeah, it's from from what I learned on the boat from what their mother told me. Uh, they're like a yin and yang, and they feed off each other. They call it gaslighting. Yeah, some of the stuff that was told was crazy to me. But <laughs> once again, it's you know they they ramp each other up. You know, Erica. Erica is the motivator that starts a lot of the shit. So she she starts stories. She's like, I don't know why Janelle doesn't like you. Janelle's over there talking about you. Then she'll go to Chuck and say, Chuck, Janelle keeps saying this and this and this, even though Janelle didn't say anything. So then he gets ramped up and then she, he gets all angry at that person. Yeah. And then she'll go back and tell you, I don't know why Chuck's so mad. I didn't, I don't know what his she problem is. She sounds like He's a just, reality TV show producer. Yeah, and she might <laughs> not be Dece. Actually, like at the end of the day, she's probably not. Dece, I, but I, I'm confused by it all because I try and see the good in people and I'm struggling huh? with those two. Well, what? I mean, I have to say, like when I've done her hair and when I first started doing her hair, she seemed normal, like yogi, very zen, like, yeah, everything's fine. That she just didn't seem whatever this was and whatever she did with him and in the mother and all of that that's not what i saw behind my chair but i had never met the mother and i had only seen chuck when he dropped off the first daughter from the other man um one time i never had any interactions with either with either one of them so when i first met erica i and i was i mean and and i mean when i'm doing extensions it's like three and four hours Mm -hmm. i've been there girl in and out and so uh she just didn't i don't know she she wasn't like this let me ask you a question be, let me let me let me tell you this sure. though kind to be like fair Ted bundy to be fair we were leaving in july and on july 4th it was one of my only days off that i was actually here at the house and they were throwing a july 4th party i believe it was and janelle really wanted to go and i didn't want to go and so i told her i wasn't going i wanted to stay home and do yard work and so because we didn't go <laughs> Erica got so pissed off that I didn't want to go to her house. Uh, she tried to get Janelle to uninvite me. So the guy wouldn't be there. So Chuck would be the only male on the boat and kept trying to tell her to come without me and kick me off the boat. No, she actually got the produ- one of the, the people that worked for the show, the one that we were in contact with. She had emailed me and said, um, Erica is not really comfortable with it right coming. Um, Again, He's got an home. immaculate yard and we can't have that. Yeah, yeah. She she want she wanted him she wanted after we'd already paid her money, um, that she wanted to uninvite him, but she still wanted me to come because she wanted to invite somebody that she already knew. Got it. So basically what she was trying to do was she was trying to divide and conquer. Right. Yeah. Casting. Uh, yeah, divide and conquer married couples. It's just <laughs> such a tough so cut. Janelle, were you hurt when you saw the scene when um when obviously it was the big uh where Chuck, he obviously called you the B word and they were over in the water and then she, they were trying to figure out what to do with the situation with, with Rhett because Rhett was walking over and she just referred to you as basically like, well, I can't, it's so hard to find a hairstylist. And that seemed like that's all she cared about was didn't want to get in the mud because she might lose. Uh, it's so hard to find someone that does her hair. Right. You sound pretty good. You sound like you're good at your job. You know, um, pat on the back. I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to boast my, I don't know. I, pretty I'm, good. I'm, I know pretty what I'm good. doing. Um, I'm do you want to shout out your business or do you want to completely disassociate where your business from the show? Which yeah. <laughs> I'm an international educator for a hair extension company. Like I, I kind of know what <laughs> right. I'm doing. Yeah. She also um, framed it as you were just a hairstylist. That's why I was confused. I didn't realize you were doing no, the all owner. these things. Yes. And also, that I, title yeah. sounds like you could be I a teach spy. All these other people for 13 years how to do hair extensions. I've been a color educator, a balayage educator, a keratin educator. I have come some accolades, but I mean, this is not about me and my job. Right. Um, and my salon. I mean, most people have already found us on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, go find it. Give it a shout out, though. We got a huge audience. They'll support you. I mean, I own Janelle, Ale- or we. Uh, own Janelle Alexis Salon in Houston. So, um, go leave. by the way, she got she did get voted top salon in Houston last year, and so she's done pretty well. For That's a husband, Whoa. right? There. NBD, <laughs> what a yeah, the great team. Now, I don't want to end it on a bad note, but did you guys tip? Nope. Oh, we gotta, no. we gotta ask about the tip too. Yeah, oh, look, yeah. so yeah. There, there's <laughs> to be fair, man, there's there's a lot of things that happened on this trip that they got extremely fortunate that it was edited out. And let's just say the whole beach scene, there was way more to what happened on the beach than what they portrayed, which was great because 
I honestly did not really want to be on TV at all. So for me, it was the the less the better. Are you uh, going to be a class act and not tell us? <laughs> no, I mean let's just say they made they made they say they let Chuck save face. So I mean they they did him a favor. They did him a really big favor. Wow. And uh, there was a lot of other stuff <laughs> that came out of my mouth and a lot of bad stuff that it made him look extremely bad. And <clears throat> to be fair, you know Janelle was eating, talking to someone, and she didn't actually. She didn't actually hear him call her a, a, a bitch, you know, mm-hmm. so she didn't hear that. I did. And because I was staring at him the whole time. And at first he did it because, you know, he wanted to look cool. And when he was in the water at first, he was with the girls and there was about four cameras around him. And he literally like some gangster movie style, put his hand up in the air and he literally goes, fuck that bitch. And that's when I lost it. And so uh, mm. that's when I jumped up and Janelle thought I was having a heart attack. And, it turned <laughs> out red. and uh, she's like, are you okay? And I was like, this guy just called you a bitch. I'll be right back. <laughs> and it, it went downhill for him after that. And so, uh, you know, like I said, they, they let him say face because there was, there was, it was embarrassing for him. So right. they did a good job of helping him out, which is fine. And it doesn't need to be, I mean, it's over. Uh, By the way, you guys came off great. I know you didn't want to be on TV. Yeah. And I know, Janelle, I know you were probably like, it ruined your trip. I mean, you guys, do you have kids? We do. So you got kids. So you got to, you're going to do all this stuff and this is going to be your big week. Uh, It sounds like you work a lot, Rhett. And then this is what your week is in your big, your big vacation. Well, you know, to be honest, man, it's our, our son's 22. He's a sheriff. So he thinks it's hilarious. So were you a military man? Sorry. No, I am not actually. Oh. No, I'm the only one in the family that wasn't because I had asthma. Uh. But uh, my son's a sheriff here locally, and he thought it was hilarious. So I flew home last Monday night, and I landed, and I've got pictures all over of look at my dad on TV. Like he thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know him and his him and his fiance thought it was amazing, and uh, it's supposed to be fun. You know yeah. it is, and and to be honest, man, we we got really lucky because we had planned our trip and our flight to where we had an extra day. And so the, the crew was amazing. I mean, to be honest, I've, I've talked to all the people in the crew. I was actually, I talked to Tom a lot, the youngest member of the, the cast, uh, Lord he's actually Wendemere, yeah. right now. and they were great. You know, uh, we told them how, you know, we had talks about us coming back again, you know, which I don't know if we'd do that, but, uh, you know, they've been wonderful. You know, I talked to them after that tip debacle that the whole tip thing, like I knew it was going to be bad. And I told Janelle, I thought it was going to be bad. So we actually gave our cash in front of everyone to have witnesses. And uh, when we got back off the boat to the hotel, (laughs) we got back and one of the producers called my wife and said, Hey, uh, you know, basically they wanted to talk to me about their banking and got on the phone with me and said, Hey, you know, we had a conversation with Chuck and Erica and they said that you guys didn't have any cash and you couldn't tip and that you were going to wire us your tip. So do you need to go ahead and get our account number and our routing number to send us a wire? And I said, man, I'm sorry, but we gave our cash on the boat right in front of everybody. So I don't know what they told people. I don't, we weren't there. All okay, I know is well, we had a phone, we well, had a phone call asking us to wire in a right. tip. Because now, I don't want to, let's just backtrack a teeny bit and I don't want to get into personal finances or exact dollar amounts or anything like that. But why did you have a feeling that it was going to be a bad tip? You could, you could tell there was, there was premature messages before this whole thing started that, you know, she was, we didn't know anything going into the trip. We didn't know how the trip worked. We didn't know anything. We were, basically told a dollar amount it was going to cost for us to get on the boat. It ended up costing us like five times that. that. Wow. So by the time that I paid for the airfares and everything else, I mean, it's substantially close to, you know, 20,000 plus dollars. It's not cheap. And, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt just for one second, Brett, for reference though, this, these prices originally were based on Erica Rose, uh, sharing this with Janelle. Hold on. Yeah. Let yeah. me, let me, do you mind? No, go ahead. Okay. So the amount that she had given us was a certain amount for the charter and then the gratuity and then also the flights. But since we weren't doing the flights, we didn't have to worry about that certain amount. So it ended up being the charter plus the gratuity and all of this. I did put this on my social media um, and I just saw that somebody wrote a whole article about it. Uh, so again, like it was a certain amount 
plus gratuity for two people together. So the gratuity was supposed to, and in our contracts, it was already supposed to have been included in our contracts. And that's what it stated in our contracts. And it also stated it um, in text message. But she also told me that if you feel like the, the uh, crew goes over and beyond the call of duty, then you want to make sure that you bring cash. I'm in the service industry. I've been in the ser service industry a very, very long time. And so I always tip 20%, if not more, but usually 20%. You could be the crappiest person and do a terrible job, but I'm still going to tip you 20% or more just because of the fact that I know what it's like. And I mean, I'm, I'm a hairstylist, yeah. just mm -hmm. the hairstylist. Right. And so, so um, that's what we did. I took whatever that charter number was, I doubled it because there's two of us. And then I times it times 20%. And then I added some for him and I, and that was the cash that I brought on to give to her. However, that morning when the tip thing started, she tried to get me, she sat down with me at the table, the round table, not uh, the one where we were all eating at and told me that it was my job to help pay for Greg, Greg's gratuity. The guy who the didn't guy show who up, didn't, which would have taken us up. to what, uh, $8,000 and I said to her, it was not my responsibility to do it. I was not paying for it. That was, that was their I, friend too, right? That they had, Greg right. had no associate. Okay. Okay. Greg, so Greg, him. Greg is actually the lawyer that owned the building that Chuck rented an office in. Yeah. <laughs> so in essence, he was like Chuck's landlord. Dude, this is the saddest picture. Like when and you really, so when this whole thing it, happened, Greg horrifying. kicked Chuck out of the building basically. Well, no, he, well, he was going to, I don't know what happened, but it was, it was a bad thing between Greg and them. So, but at the time, yeah, we don't okay. we don't want to defame was, anybody because God knows what Chuck yeah, can get I, up I to exactly. with it. I don't see them being <laughs> litigious people. I I I see them being They're lawyers. So, uh, so <laughs> the gratuity thing happened. Like she sat me down. She told me that morning after you know the night before with her and the day before with her and all that that I I was supposed to pay for. Greg. And I said, no, I am not paying for Greg. I am not the reason why he did not get on this charter. You guys are, you need to pay for him, right. not us. 100%. Not doing that. I brought the gratuity that, that I, you know, that I thought I was supposed to bring. And then I gave it to her in her stateroom. Holly was there and Susan was bringing in her cash as well. And um, we were still mic'd up at this point in time. So this, this whole, Oh, Chuck. Well, uh, uh Brett and Janelle could have given some money. No, I gave it directly to her, not even to production, to her and said, here is my cash. This is what I'm giving. And she said, thank you. So they, so in the interview they did with us, which you heard the complete interview, Janelle. Yeah. So they're, you're asserting that they are lying when they say that that $6,000 was all a result of them pulling their money together. Yes. A thousand percent. A uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Compulsive. You know, I'll say this, you have, you have people in this world and I deal with a lot of them on a daily basis that have money and people that have money never talk about how much money they have. People that talk about how they have a champagne budget and how rich they are and the lifestyle they live yeah, are the champagne ones. Champagne taste on a beer budget. What, no, that's what he used to have and he said he changed it. But people that do that, to and my that experience, they have nothing. And, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, I mean, but God, we're not, and we're not going to say that they don't have anything. Yeah, I don't we're know just, what they have. I know we're going to say that people act a certain way. No, but they're totally probably uh, decently wealthy, but again, they could not afford to do what they did. They did it to promote their business. Then they went on and acted like monsters, got a ton of negative Google reviews, and then said it was because of our podcast. So, I mean, we're just dealing with complete fucking crazy people. But we got to wrap it up. You guys I, I do gotta, have one last question. Let me. Let Go me ahead, leave sir. you with one funny thought. This, yeah. this is funny. So this will give you an idea of the kind of person you're dealing with. So and I'll say this because this is what I tell people when they're like, is he really like that? <laughs> uh, before the show, they took us to this most amazing seaside restaurant for a brunch. And it was all of us and the production crew. And they go in there and tell us what to expect, what the mics look like, what our boat trip's going to be like. They introduce us to everybody. And we're all sitting there eating food. And even, you know, someone didn't even like that food. And the owner is this 80 year old Spaniard man who gives my wife and I a tour of his beautiful place with the most amazing artwork. I mean, I still have pictures of it. And he takes us upstairs to where he had a Latin disco that got shut 
down because of COVID. And when we're upstairs, he tells Janelle and I, he says, look, my friend, I, I really thank y'all for being here. And I really hope you enjoy my restaurant. And just so you know, we're one of only two places in all of Spain that has ever won a Michelin award. And I said, man, congratulations. I was like, that is amazing. And I was like, you know, I, I loved it. You know, your place is a beautiful. And we talked to this guy for like 30, 40 minutes. So we, we get done. I mean, we right, go down with the table. I can't. We, get, we go down no. with the table. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry. So Just we go down with the a little bit. table. We go outside and we're all in a circle. And someone is still upset about the food. And uh, I, I said, you know, I, I don't really understand why you're so upset. I said, do you just realize you ate in one of only two restaurants in all of Spain that got awarded a Michelin award? And this such said person in front of everyone looked around. And he goes, well, oh, I don't understand. Do they fucking sell tires, too? And everyone just kind of looked at each other because they thought he was joking. And that such said person was not joking. Right. And they thought the Michelin award was given out for people that sold car tires. Right. Uh, and that was literally how the trip started. And it was pretty bad from there. Yeah. So it only, it only got worse and I wish them the best. I hope their law <laughs> practice is great. You yeah, know, like no, I, I really do. I hope uh, they preside over many, many uh, successful divorce agreements and uh, <laughs> other nasty things like that. Guys, we cannot thank you enough for joining us. Uh, thank you for enduring the horrors that you endured. I don't want to say horrors because you guys were on a luxury vacation, but it does sound and it did look pretty terrible. So thank you for providing us entertainment. Um, hopefully you guys can go back on and have a good time or something. We would like love that. that. And uh, Janelle, plug your business one more time. And guys, Barnacles, show them some love for coming on and uh, and giving us the deets. What's your, what's your business again, Janelle? It's Janelle Alexis Salon in Houston, Texas. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot for doing this, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. It. You were great.